Namaste everybody, Lisa Romani here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I'm pretty excited. I want to share something. I just have to um, get to the proper screen. Um, I'll be reading to you guys something that um, I just discovered, and I think it's important because it's scientific and it matters. So many of us who are on the healing path who uh, have been emotionally abused and emotionally neglected are stuck in survival mode. So when we're stuck in survival mode, what that means is that we're stuck in fight or flight. So we are either uh, fighting people, we're aggressive and we're angry when we feel something. So we're either fighting or we're trying to run away, we're shutting down and we're fleeing, we're dissociating from our emotions, we're denying our emotions. Sometimes we're fawning, you know, like we're three years old and mommy's mad at us or you know, you'll, you'll, you'll know if you're fawning if when your friend is angry at you or I just want to shut my phone off too. You know, if someone's upset with you and you start to get flustered and imme immediately your mind goes into, oh, how can I fix this? Even if you're not, even if you're not wrong and even if the other person is blatantly wrong, you're fawning. You're trying to make sure everything's okay. So when we're in survival mode and that is all because we've never been taught, damn, my, my, Facebook is still on. Um, when we're in survival mode because you don't know how to deal with our emotions, um, we will go into some type of defensive mode, right? Because we don't know how to deal with our emotions. We shut down. The amygdala gets highly activated. And we go into, and what I've always believed is that we go into, I have called it default mode, right? So I just happened upon this article, and I will share the link. And it says your autopilot mode is real. Now we know how the brain does it. So this talks about this autopilot mode um, seems to be run by a set of structures called the default mode network, DMN. It was discovered in the 1990s when researchers noticed that people lying in brain, uh, brain scanners show patterns of brain activity even when they aren't really doing anything. This research provided the evidence that our brains are active even when we aren't consciously putting our minds to work. I mean, we knew that, right? Obviously, if we're walking and talking, you know, we have brain activity. But this helps us understand that just because we're, we're walking and just because we're talking doesn't mean that we're thinking. We can literally drive home from the mall and not know how we got home. When we tie our shoes, that is all part of the default mode network because we've done it. We've patterned it. It's become part of our subconscious programming. We have neural associations that are, are, are connected, and we've done this thing over and over and over and over, so we don't have to think about it anymore. When we are thinking, we are doing something we haven't done before. Like if you've never ridden a bike, now you have to think about your balance. But once you start to learn to ride a bike and you've done it over and over, that becomes part of your default mode network, right? Um, so the article goes on. This is just confirms what I've been trying to say for the past, I don't know how many years. But what does the DMN do? Several studies have found that it seems to be involved in assessing past events and planning for the future. Others suggest the network, the network is involved in self-awareness, although this has been called into question by the finding that rats and newborns appear to have a version of the DMN2. It is unlikely that rats are conscious of themselves in the same way that humans are, says Denise Vaden Saver at the University of York in the UK. Instead, the DMN must have a basic function common to all animals. Baden Seaver and his colleagues at the University of Cambridge wondered if the network might help us do things without paying much attention, such as tying our shoelace, shoelaces or driving along a familiar road. So, I believe that what happens in one space happens in all space. So, if this DMN, DMN network, default mode network, that scientists have, have figured out exists, exists when it comes to tying our shoes, it does exist when it comes to trauma. So that means if I have a, a patterned set of responses that I have been um, relying on since I'm two or three and it becomes part of my subconscious network, then when triggered, my default mode will absolutely take over. What does this mean? This means, dear ones, that we have to begin observing our emotions with an analytical mindset. 
we have to begin logically looking and observing at the way we react. That's Alice. She's moaning and groaning. We have to be able to observe our emotions. We have to learn to take the time. I am, I am surrounded by notebooks, right? Because one of the things that, that um, I'm very, very conscious about doing is observing my reactions because I am disidentifying from the behavior and I notice and I know with all of me that my behavior, especially when I'm triggered, when it's reactive, is not me. It is a pattern of behavior. For those of us who are on the enlightened path, we have to understand that the entire goal is to become, live in the creative mind. What I mean by that is the subconscious mind is dead. It is not creative. It is a matter of patterns that have been um, practiced over and over and over and over. Our consciousness, our ability to expand our awareness, our desire, and our, our hero-like and warrior-like willingness to be able to observe how we feel and to observe the words that come out of our mouth and to observe our reactivity, to want to be different. This all comes into play. If you have the desire to want to live a peaceful life, then you have got to learn to observe the words that come out of your mouth to observe how you react, to pay attention when you feel triggered, and to begin to investigate what that means. Um, one of the things that I did, and I still do when necessary, I don't need to do it so much anymore, but when I first started becoming aware that, oh my God, this brain, the subconscious mind has been programmed. I didn't know there was such, such a thing called the default mode network. It just made sense to me, right? That's why I've been saying for years, it's not you, it's your programming. But now this article and this, these studies out, out of the UK are proving that the brain can be on autopilot. And I believe most of the time it is. We just don't know that. Most of us get up on Monday and do exactly what we did last Monday. We, don't, we are not in the creative mind. Most of us have been taught that the world is a scary place, that money's hard to come by and life has to be hard. Money doesn't grow on trees. You know, happiness is, is a fairy tale. Nobody's really that happy. Everybody's miserable. You know, um, you know, if you want something that's awesome, then, you know, oh, that's a pie in the sky dream. You know, come down to earth. You know, nobody's really that happy. You know, um, that law of attraction stuff's a bunch of nonsense, you know. Oh, my grandmother had uterine cancer and my mother had uterine cancer, so I'll probably get uterine cancer. You know, oh, my great-grandfather was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic. That's why I'm an alcoholic. We really got to start realizing that our word, we need to be pure of word. We need to make sure that our intentions are lining up with our word because the word is, is helping create the neural networks, which is helping to create this default mode network, which will dictate and run our reality especially when we are not conscious. When One of the things that I love about teaching people and coaching people, and one of the, the amazing things that happens inside the coaching program that I, that I run for three months straight, is that people are in a learning mode. Science has also proven that when you shift from being in a, um, an, you're in an anxious state, you're, I believe you're in a default mode. You know, you're not thinking. You're just reacting to the way you feel right and your brain can only play with the tools that are in shed in the shed so if you don't have any tools to deal with anxiety right then cortisol is going to kick out your heart's going to race your palms are going to sweat you're going to become aware of how you feel you're going to become more anxious and we're in this freaking loop and it doesn't stop and what happens is when you go from that mode to a learning mode different parts of your brain get activated and suddenly you start to calm down it's amazing when you learn to understand and respect that the subconscious mind is not creative, the conscious mind is creative, but it takes desire and willingness and tenacity and respect and pure intention. You've got to want to find peace. You've got to want to figure this out. And if your desire lines up with how you're behaving in the physical world, then you can figure this stuff out. But 
I just wanted to create a video. I'm just so excited about this new information um, because I think it's important, especially for those that those of you who follow my channel. If you want to be notified of new videos, click the bell. Um, become part of the conversation. People in this community read one another's posts. Um, if you've had a breakthrough, share it. This is only going to help build hope. I believe that people have to heal people. I, I don't think that we should. We are going to be able to rely on our governments and you know politicians on either side of the table, right? Um, you know, on either side, it's going to come down to people helping people and sharing this information. And so, just know that when you have unhealed trauma until it is resolved you may go into a reactive mode know that the reactive mode can be part of this default mode network that that new research research is pointing to truly exists if the brain has the ability to be go be considered active while tying your shoelaces which is an automatic we know how to do it now right the same applies with emotions so if every time someone asks me to do something or suggests that I that I put too much salt on the food or you know asks me why didn't I why did I why did I hang the picture on that wall you know I could get triggered because I could have been you know persecuted as a child I could have been um, you know I could have been, it could have been people could have been inquisitive like um, intrusive and so I could as an adult I hear this quite often with my clients you know they get upset when they feel like people are questioning them you okay Alice so what happens is in some cases that could be a trigger for somebody so, Oh, you don't trust me uh, are you spying on me uh, you know all of that stuff gets triggered and so when that when we have a trigger we go into autopilot mode and we will rely on the behaviors that showed up when you know we were unaware that the behaviors were actually being ingrained so I'm just really encouraged by this new information and I just wanted to share it with my YouTube community because I think it's fabulous um, you can learn to observe the way your brain behaves if you are highly emotional you are someone that must learn to observe your behavior you must learn to um, observe the emotions that show up you must learn to observe the patterns that show up you must learn to understand and think back to when these patterns first began to surface you have to do some self inquiry and of course of course ultimately you have to learn life skills to help you heal but I just thought this was exciting information and I could not wait to share it with my YouTube community and with all of you who are as interested in blending science and psychology and spirituality all together. It is absolutely amazing. We are holistic beings. For us to, to think about our emotions and then not think about how the brain works just doesn't make sense. You know, the brain works a certain way and it has certain... Um, it has a certain job to do and different areas of the brain do certain things it is it is it doesn't really make sense for us to feel our emotions and but not think about our emotions it doesn't make much sense to be highly emotional and to not be curious about how logic plays into that into our emotions the more logical we can become right about how we feel emotionally I think that is where we get the balance that is where we get the balance when I can learn to think about the way I feel rather than react because react is a default mode I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not in the creative mode I'm not you know if I'm just reacting to the way I feel you know it's just like the dead burying the dead like you know if I'm stuck in reactive mode I'm really not living I'm recycling the past and so getting out ahead of the way we feel, that is how we become creators. That is how we get in touch with our God self. That is how we step into newness and abundance. That is how we create. We create the lives that we want. So I encourage you to get out of reactive mode. I encourage you, especially if you are highly emotional, to start thinking about the way you feel and observing how you feel. It could be very exciting. 
And so I hope this information finds you well, and I hope that you're really excited about life and excited about mastering your mind and using these types of ideas to help you become more integrated and to help you discover that true inner wisdom that is absolutely in you and is in all of us. So for now, I will say goodbye until next time, and I am bowing to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Bye for now.